With the coronavirus now spreading across Europe and the US, we will find out how it's affecting the markets with Bob Mason of FX Empire. This is the Market Drivers. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us. Let's start with the Fed's decision to slash interest rates in the US. What is your opinion on this? Well, to start the week with the Fed delivering a bazooka of a, a monetary policy move going into the Asian session on Monday morning, uh, cutting zero, interest rates to zero. Um, Trump's been harping on about that for months. Um, and after his talking up the chances of a, a market rally going into Monday, you're wondering whether the Fed and the, the US administration were in collaboration in delivering not only zero rates, but obviously the 700 odd billion in QE, um, which then raises the question of the Fed's independence and impartiality. Um, obviously, with um, the Fed having been under the hammer and Powell under pressure from Trump in particular uh, in delivering rates, uh, well, the markets didn't like that. Um, that was way too much. Uh, without even being able to assess the damage from the coronavirus that is really yet to take hold and grip of the U.S. economy. Um, obviously, this morning, Wednesday morning, we've seen all 50 states report cases, but we're not we're not seeing the catastrophe of Europe just yet. So for the Fed to deliver that and use up most of its ammunition, if not all of it, before any further slowdown in the economy and more widespread um, cases across the U.S., um, I think we would have preferred uh, the Fed to hold back for a little while longer, you know, obviously having already delivered an emergency rate cut just a week ago. So, yeah, all in all, a bit of a shock for the markets. That was shock and all. Uh, Trump got it wrong on the on the equity bounce. Obviously, the 12 percent drops um, into deep bearish territory was exactly what the markets thought. And I completely agree. Um, holding back would have been the way forward. With the coronavirus now sweeping across Europe and the U.S., how will it affect the global economy? In terms of the impact on the global economy, the coronavirus, I mean, we have to look at the, the economic data out of China. These are February numbers um, when we saw industrial production tank by 13.5%. The unemployment rate, which has been pretty steady, uh, around 5.2%, jumping up to 6.2%. And then obviously fixed asset investment, seeing an even sharper fall. Of greater significance for me, however, was how far the economists were wrong and off the mark. You know, economists have forecast continued increases in fixed asset growth, investment, and obviously industrial production year on year. Um, and the fact that they were so off the mark suggests that the markets are still, you know, mispricing the impact of the coronavirus. I, I wrote about this quite some time ago, back on the 18th of January, wondering why the markets were so calm. Obviously, since then, you know, going into February and March, the markets are obviously responding in the way that you'd expect. But I think we're still not really pricing in what kind of damage there really is going to be. I mean, if you consider the, the shutdown in the EU, the spread across the US and across each member state, and what's going to be needed to really contain the virus, you know, it really is economic meltdown. You've got consumer spending that's going to just come to a grind to a halt. Production's going to grind to a halt. Service sector activity, okay, you've got some activity that's going to continue. But when you've got schools shut, shops shut, you know, obviously retail shut, restaurants and bars shut, you know, there's not much money to be made. And it's just about survival. And that's what this fiscal support is, you know, from the government to support the businesses that wouldn't otherwise be able to survive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is pretty bad stuff, um, you know, obviously, and the longer it lasts, the worse it's going to be. And, you know, we're not seeing the numbers truly reflect yet. We saw March manufacturing numbers out of the US on Monday, the New York Empire State numbers. That is the kind of thing we're going to expect. And Philly Fed, you know, we're going to be seeing similar stuff at the, you know, later on in the week. So price in a little bit more um, volatility in the equity markets to continue and in the currency market and commodities. With pretty dire numbers on the economic calendars recently, how is the economic data looking at the moment? Looking at the economic data, I spoke before about the China data. Obviously, that was pretty alarming and that definitely contributed to the market slump on Monday. Uh, you know, economists were way off the mark. And obviously, that's pretty dire numbers. And that's February. So March isn't going to be much better. You know, with China still suffering, although the obviously the rate of contraction is slowing and businesses will are expected to at least start opening up, though it's not going to be, you know, a rush, um, particularly with the rest of the world in shutdown mode. Uh, the rest of the stats, 
throw away January numbers, don't even look at it, not really interested. Um, then they're not going to reflect anything. They're not going to have any influence on, you know, on the equity markets or the currencies. Uh, out of the East, obviously, February numbers will be reflective of the impact of China. And then moving towards the West, you've got to be looking at um, February, March. If you see any weak numbers in February, then they're just going to be weaker in March and April. So that's going to be a little bit concerning. As we saw, US retail sales figures fell in February. Obviously, looking at how the US is going right now with the coronavirus, that's going to get worse in March and it's going to be even worse in April. Um, what I'm going to be looking for, however, obviously, we saw New Empire State uh, manufacturing tank. Um, Philly Fed's probably going to do a similar thing. Um, employment figures. Um, we've been pretty nonchalant about the weekly jobless claim numbers. So expect initial jobless claims to start beginning to garner plenty of interest. Um, if we see anything creep up towards the 300K level, you know, obviously that's going to raise a lot of concerns for the markets. And that's going to point to that slumping consumption that we're expecting. Economic data out of Japan, trade data, you know, we saw a surplus, but that was largely because of imports completely sliding um, as output tanks out of Japan. Um, so yeah, Australia, employment figures that are due out tomorrow, um, that's February numbers. So we could see the impact of China, you know, and obviously uh, trade terms impacting the Australian unemployment rates and so on. So that's going to hurt the Aussie dollar. I mean, we're already at 59 levels against the US, so how much worse can it get? It could still get worse, uh, particularly if the RBA needs to step in again, and they probably will need to. Um, so yeah, stats, um, February, March are going to be the key numbers. And then, you know, obviously, if this virus continues, then we're looking at April. This isn't this isn't the first quarter game. You know, obviously, second quarter is also going to be affected. EU is only just shutting down. So this isn't going to disappear in a week or two. So, yeah, monitor those. Um, March in particular, I think, are going to be quite dire and that's going to hit the markets. And finally, with crude oil prices on the slide, how do you see this panning out over the next week or so? Crude oil prices? Well, what a slide. Uh, not completely unexpected when you've got a price war between Russia and OPEC. The Saudis cranking up production in April. You know, obviously, things aren't going to be looking particularly good, even without the coronavirus. Throwing the coronavirus, obviously, people aren't going to be driving around in the US and other parts of the world. So demand is going to slide considerably. Manu manufacturing sector activities, obviously, tanking. You know, look at the stats out of China and out of the US, you know, to, at the turn of the quarter. Um, and that's going to get worse before it gets any better. So demand on the slide, output on the rise. And let's face it, if if Russia and OPEC actually agree to any output you know, cuts um, to provide some price stability, Trump doesn't want high oil prices. There's a, it's a perfect time for the US administration to throw some money at shale producers, for them to crank up production, to keep prices at these current levels, just to get the economy through this coronavirus turmoil. So it's not gonna rebound anytime soon. Uh, I, I would see output continuing to pressure prices. You know, we're not going to see sub sub twenties, uh, at least to the levels that will sort of question whether the Saudis continue to produce. You know, obviously they can stomach sub ten per barrel levels. We're not going to see that. But you know, around twenty per barrel, you know, it, it's pretty it's pretty tough time for the rest of the producers. So yeah, the U.S. Trump's going to need to subsidize. Um, he probably will. Um, just to keep prices down and support. That's another support for the economy. So uh, there's no real upside for crude oil prices. You can't really see it unless, you know, producers just basically shut down for a period of time. And, you know, that's not going to happen. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us, Bob. That was the Midweek Market Drivers, and we will see you again next week.